It is Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022. This is another edition of Baseball Today. That is Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose. We are joined by producer Dan and intern Sam. And holy smokes. Baseball trade deadline. It's ending at 6 o'clock Eastern. And holy shit. We got it going early. Right before noon Eastern, Juan Soto finally got traded from the Washington Nationals with Josh Bell to the San Diego Padres, who are unquestionably going for it. A day after they pick up one of the best closers in baseball and Josh Hader, they have picked up arguably the sport's best hitter in Juan Soto. In exchange, going to Washington, left-hander Mackenzie Gore, outfielder Robert Hassel III, shortstop C.J. Abrams, outfield prospect James Woods, right-handed pitcher Harlan Susana, and Eric Hosmer is now out of San Diego and headed to D.C. for the next few seasons. Your immediate reaction is? Holy shit, it happened. (laughs) I mean, we've been talking about this for so long, Chris. Juan Soto, 23 years old, like you just said, maybe the best hitter in the sport, one of, is going to the Padres, who already are one of the funnest teams in baseball to watch. And not only do you get Juan Soto, Josh Bell ain't no slouch. And we've we've been talking about, or I haven't been talking about, but people in San Diego have been talking about what are we going to do with Hosmer? You know, we need to upgrade first base. We need someone to hit for power. Well, you got a guy that can hit for power. Hosmer's going to the Nationals. Immediately, I also I'm happy for the whole city of San Diego, and I'm happy for Juan Soto and Josh Bell. I'm very, very sad for Eric Cosmer. I mean, he is he's entrenched in that team. He's got a lot of really good friends on that team. Now he's going to go to Washington. It's kind of my first initial reaction, but for the no, Padres and Padres fans, holy crap, man! You you are now. On the level of the Dodgers, the Mets, and the Braves in the National League, you are a legitimate World Series contender for years to come. This is exciting. This is as exciting as it can get if you're a Padres fan. Okay, so you, the most important thing I heard there is you are on par with the Dodgers, the Mets, the Braves. So they can, they can beat any of those teams in a three, five, or seven game series as they stand right now. I mean, look, name a better, and I'm not, this is going to, I'm paring it down. Okay. Name a better one, two, three. I'm not saying they're going to hit one, two, three, but like in the middle of your lineup, then Fernando Tatis, Fernando Tatis Jr., Juan Soto, and Manny Machado. Well, and you're surrounded by other dudes too. I'm just saying, think about that. Back to back to back. Pitchers are going to be, it ain't good for pitchers. But wasn't it a month ago where you were like, everybody's got to slow down? Like, we don't know what Fernando Tatis Jr. is going to look like. He hasn't played in freaking almost a year. So we don't know that. I'm not trying to, you know, pee on their parade here. But Fernando Tatis Jr. at this point is just a name. He, no, he's like, not, Chris. Don't give me that, dude. I understand maybe he might, maybe it might take him a week to get back into game shape facing major league pitching again. But this dude's a freaking rock star. This dude does. He is who he is. Okay, good. That's what I wanted to hear because you won't find a bigger Tatis fan than me. I've had arguments with major league players about him, about the style that he brings, how he handles himself, all sorts of stuff. And I said, listen, this is what we want in the sport. So if you don't like him, too fucking bad. Go get him out. And nobody's really gotten him out. So I am super excited. Nobody's getting him out, no. Here's the one thing I'm rooting for because they're not going to catch the Dodgers. So they're not going to be the one or the two seed. At best, they will be the four seed. They would be the best wild card. But they're still four and a half games behind the Braves, I think, for that position. So they still have to make up something in order to get home field advantage in that first best of three round. I want to see a series in San Diego under those lights when they're flickering, kind of like they do at Yankee Stadium. That play, it's remember, it's the only game in town. The Chargers moved to Los Angeles. They don't have a basketball team. They don't have a hockey team. This is it. The entire energy of San Diego in the sports arena goes directly to Petco Park, and I, for one, can't wait. The energy will be electric. It's a beautiful park, like you said, and Southern California, is it's baseball. 
I don't care what anybody tells you. It's not a football destination, although they we put out some really good football players too. It's it's baseball. This is a baseball area, dude. And like you're and you're right. There's nothing else there. The atmosphere will be incredible. It already was incredible, dude. And now you give the fans something to really rally around. You put playoff baseball there. We're going there. I already told you when this when this stuff already started going down. I said, me and you, C. Rosie, going to be spending a lot of time in San Diego together. Uh, just one note, and obviously this is stuff that is constantly changing, so thank you for bearing with us. John Heyman of the New York Post uh, and MLB Network reports that Hosmer has been notified – He's in the agreed upon deal. He has a no trade and has not consented yet. Belief wow. is they will figure this out, however, one way or another. That could be some sort of money play. It could be a um, remember his salary goes down now starting next year, which was why he was more movable than in years past. So I don't know exactly what that all means. Eric Hosmer's a well decorated veteran. I know it did not work out for him in San Diego, but. Still a, a well thought of dude in this sport, so it just it just might take a little time. I forgot about his no trade clause. What do you ask for if you're Eric Hosmer? You got you got you got them by the balls right now. Yeah, you Excuse do. My language. Yeah, you do because you can't. If you're San Diego, based on what happened last year with Max Scherzer, you cannot have a trade for a 23 year old future Hall of Famer like Juan Soto fall through. What do you do? What do you ask for? You're Eric Hosmer. What do you ask for? Like all your money up front, like a signing bonus type thing. Can they do I that? Like, so. I, I don't think so. I mean, this is a sport where all the money's guaranteed anyway. So it's not like in football. Sometimes when guys change teams, there's a a shift in the amount of money that is guaranteed, or it's turning into a signing bonus or something like that. In baseball, you don't have to worry about that. Whatever you sign for is yours. You get to keep, no matter how you do on the game show. Yeah, but it's nice. It's you want your all your money up front if you can. I don't think that I don't know if that's a possibility. I'm just trying to rack my brain to think of yeah. what can Eric Cosmer use this leverage to get. Well, I don't know, but the big the big picture here is assuming that that part of the equation, um, you know, is done. I don't know. What if he just says no? That's why you have a no trade clause. Like, I don't want to go to Washington. This guy loves playing in San Diego, dude. So it's apparently, uh, according to Dennis Lynn, who covers the Padres um, for the Athletic, he says the Nationals are on Eric Hosmer's 10-team no trade list. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Could you imagine, though, if you did this and oh, this is a nightmare. I love it. I love it, dude, because think about the emotions that Eric Hosmer is feeling right now. He's probably pissed. You, I mean, we just talked about beautiful San Diego. I'm not taking anything away from D.C., but you're going to go there. You're not going to be competitive. You're not going to be playing for anything meaningful over the next two months or the next three years. Like, shoot. Joel Sherman makes a really interesting point. He said, who's in the middle of getting this deal done? And this is not going to be fun for baseball Boris. fans. Scott Boris. He reps yep. Hosmer, who has to give his consent to the trade. He also reps Soto and Bell, Mackenzie Gore, and James Woods. I wonder if there's some sort of extra monetary compensation. Not that he needs more money, but something the Padres are going to have to give up to him. I don't know what it is. They have to buy him a freaking house in la jolla like what are they gonna do man I think he's already got that <laughs> be in. another right. another one bro let's let's very quickly spend a minute on the washington national side of things we've talked about this ever since it was first reported that yeah the nats are open for business on juan soto never before has a surefire 23 year old future hall of famer been traded never before in the history of this sport if this is the haul they get, is this good enough to sell to Nationals fans? Oh, man. The only reason I like think that they're okay with it is because they won the World Series in 2019. If they didn't win that World Series, which they were close to losing it, Howie Kendrick saved them against Houston, right? Say they don't get the World Series. It's a tragedy in sports. Like the talent that they've had and have had to let go. I mean, we used to, we talk about like the Pirates and the 
and the Chris Archer trade and all the talent that uh, they gave up. And we kind of laugh at it a little bit. Uh, this, if you really look back at it, this is like worse than the Marlins outfield in like all the people that they gave up with Ozuna, Yelly, and Stanton and Rio Muto. Like this is way worse than that. You're talking about Trey Turner, Max Scherzer, um, Bryce Harper, Juan Soto, Josh Bell. Like these are massive names that like were on your team and Anthony Rendon. Not anymore, but you got the World Series. Yeah. So I think that makes it palatable for people in DC. Well, I'm looking at it from building blocks for the future. This was an unwatchable team when, with the exception of when Juan Soto was at the plate. There, it, there just isn't a guy that you tune in to see where you're like, yeah, I get, you know, sometimes on bad teams, you'd be like, oh, I don't mind seeing him. Like, right, when the Angels are shitty like they are, at least we're going to tune in when Otani's up and when Trout gets back. We're going to watch those two guys. They're a bad team but we're going to watch those two guys It Cincinnati. I like checking out Jonathan India and I still like watching Vado hit. So I need something. There wasn't one. Well, I do. I'm sorry. I mean, I do too. Just saying. But my point is this, there wasn't one guy who's drawn me to flip the channel so I could catch a nationals game outside of Soto. CJ Abrams is really interesting. We've heard about his name for years. He hasn't, made his mark yet he's 21 he's, 22 he's 21. years old he's 21 right exactly Mackenzie gore showed me something this year and i hope that elbow is structurally sound i really do because i think he can be a badass at the top of the rotation between that and josiah gray maybe starting to learn how to pitch a little bit that's going to help him i've heard of robert hassel the third's name for years um he was, I think, part of the deal that was going to be in the Jose Ramirez package right before the season. So I do, th- I think the Nats actually did okay here. Well, you got it. Look, you need, they've acquired a ton of prospects over the last couple of years. So you need a couple of those guys to hit, be guys in the show. And then you have no payroll commitments outside of what, Patrick Corbin? Gold. A little bit of Strasburg left, right? Well, a, a lot of Strasburg. Lot, got, yeah, yeah, yeah. We looked at he's that. He's got four years left. We looked at that earlier in the year. He's making a lot of money, whatever. That's still not a lot of financial commitment. So if you're a Nationals fan, you're hoping that some of these young guys come up and become everyday players for you. And then because they're cheap, you can start spending some payroll on established veterans who can put you back into contention. The only problem is, man, you're just in a tough division. You're in a tough division. Like the Braves, who we're going to talk about coming up, I think, they have a core that's locked up pretty much forever. They have joined the Houston Astros in the open air concept of windowless houses. They just have an infinite window open there in Atlanta. You know, the Mets are going to consistently be in it because they have an owner that doesn't give a shit and will spend money no matter what. I think it's going to be a long five years for the nationals. Thanks. I want to finish up our Soto discussion with this. Yes or no. Assuming Tatis comes back to health, are the Padres a legitimate World Series contender after the last 24 hours of acquiring Soto, Bell, and Hayter? Yes, 100% they are. I don't think they're done. I mentioned that to you before the show. I think they still go after some bullpen help. There's guys out there that they can get that aren't going to cost them an arm and a leg. I think they're going to do that. But as constructed, yeah. They're on that tier with those teams, like I mentioned. Like you, They had to do something to get on the Dodgers, Braves, uh, Mets tier, and they did. Should we, um, should we t- both text Haas right now and suggest to him what to hold out for with the compensation? I, I kind of want to text him, like, what are you going to get? Bro? Are you going to get a yacht? Are they going to give you a yacht? Like, they, he's, he has them. Oh this God. is like DeGrom. Having Steve Cohen in the offseason. Durham's going to come back, pitch great, and he's going to tell Steve Cohen, pay me my no, money. No, this is bigger. This is bigger than that. This is The whole deal, the whole baseball landscape today is contingent on Eric Hosmer saying yes. What's the – so the Padres are going to have to – I believe the Padres – We'll pay whatever the compensation is. Maybe they split it. I don't know how it works, dude. When I got traded, then I had a when I had a trade compensation. 
clause. Yeah. It was the team that traded for me that had to pay that. So I wonder if it's the nationals that would have to pay. That doesn't make sense. We'll find out soon enough. All right. So we had the Josh Hader deal yesterday in a four for one trade uh, with Rogers being the big piece that was going back to Milwaukee. Um, Does this make sense at all for the NL central leading Milwaukee Brewers? From a front office standpoint, knowing the way that they think, it makes sense for them. Um, We've had a little bit of regression with Josh Hader this year. He's making some good coin this year, slated to make around like $16 next year. And I think that is kind of the reason that they moved on. He's had some troubles this year, so they're still – I think they decided, hey, let's go get – whatever we can get for him while he still has, you know, name value. I mean, this guy's been the best reliever in the national league for a couple of years now. I think they feel comfortable with Devin Williams in the back end. They think they could probably get similar production out of Taylor Rogers. Although I don't know if that's the case because you know, when haters, right, he's untouchable. Uh, but I, knowing the way front offices think, I think they've been talking about this for at least a year now. And we all were like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? But this is just the way they think. They're going to open up some money to go, you know, I, I assume to use it for pieces next year. The, the monetary difference between Rodgers and Hayter this year is not very different. It's kind of the same. So this isn't like taking pressure off them this year so they can use some money to go get guys. That's not the case. I think it's more for next year. I don't love it for the immediate um, play for the the Brewers, but I think it's not shocking to me that they did it. I, I, I at the outset, I was pretty mad at them because I do believe in Hader and I like like having that one-two punch of him and Williams there. But the more I've been able to to sit down and think about it, it, it kind of makes sense for them. I'm happy the Padres got him. Um, but this is the way some of these teams operate, specifically the Brewers. Do you remember earlier this year when Josh Hader uh, got career save number 100? And I asked if he would get, I think Dan Plesak's franchise record was like 133 or 135. I said, do you think he'll get that? And you were like, of course he will. And I was like, no, I I get it. If he stays healthy and he plays out his contract, he'll get it. But I, I felt like something was fishy. His name has been out there too much over the last year in order for this not to happen. So even though it happened and I was like, holy shit, really, this went down. The more I thought about it, it it doesn't shock me all of that much. Now, it doesn't mean that if I'm a Milwaukee Brewers fan, I'm not pissed off today. Because what we did was we gave up the number one reliever in the history of the sport of pitchers who have thrown at least 300 innings, just strictly relievers, in Ks per nine, in whip. I mean, we're talking about a guy who's not just a dude. So... I also don't look at singular trades in a vacuum. There's got to be more today from David Stearns. There's got to be some other play because it's not good enough for the Milwaukee Brewers to just make the playoffs for a fifth straight year. It's a great story. It's cute. They had never been in the playoffs in back-to-back years before 2018 and 2019. But now that they're there, it's they're no longer the cute little fuzzy, heartwarming story. Show me what you can do. And I guarantee it, it didn't play great in the clubhouse yesterday. I don't think it played great in the clubhouse. But again, I'm, just, I'm referencing how front offices think. All front offices believe that relievers specifically have a shelf life. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe the Brewers were like, dude, we got as much as possible out of this dude and let's go get value. I mean, this is the way they approach rosters. Value, 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 yes. value. As they start making more money, the value gets goes down a little bit. They believe in shelf life. They've gotten how many years out of out of Hater? Like five? Well, let me just ask you this. It's a simple yes, no question. Are they better right now than they were at this time yesterday? No. No. They're no. not. But and- but you're right. Chris, I have talked to some people with the Brewers, and the one thing that they did say was, we are absolutely not done. And that's why I'm willing to give them a pass 
next? What if the, if they do not do anything by six o'clock Eastern, then is it a fail? Yes, 100%. Okay. 100%. Because you do have to look at the trade deadline as a whole. Okay. Like, you might have to take a loss here because your next trade is going to get you this, whatever that may be. I've been promised a lot <laughs> by the Brewers and they haven't given me anything yet. So I'm, I'm expecting some big news, man. Uh, but to, you know, to answer your question, are they better than they were yesterday right now? No, they're not. No. Yeah. So we'll see six o'clock Eastern. If nothing has been done, is Ryan Braun coming back for one last postseason run yeah, with the Brew Crew? I don't think that's the thing they're looking no, for. No, he's having so much wrong. fun in Malibu. He's I believe me, I'm sure he is. He looked he looked good the other day when we saw him. All right, let's move on to the oh, by the way, I do want to give some props to Devin Williams, who I believe has gone now 30 consecutive outings without having been scored upon. The last day he gave up a run was May 10th, which means you know of what? course, when he has the first opportunity to close a game. It just always happens that way. Speaking of scoring, Chris, scored two days in a row, man. You? Wiffle ball. Yeah, I scored a couple of runs. That way. I in my blitz ball game, yeah. Good job. New York Yankees continue to add. This time to their starting rotation, they get Frankie Montas along with reliever Lou Trevino. And they picked up another reliever from the Chicago Cubs, Scott Efros. So you add that on to Andrew Benintendi. Has Brian Cashman done enough to give the Yankees their best shot at the World Series since winning it all in 09? No, this isn't their best shot. Their best shot would have been to move a bunch of prospects and go after a guy like Soto or whatever. It's not their best shot, but I think it is good enough. I think their roster is good enough right now. They have starting pitching depth, especially now with Montas in the fold there. Uh, they needed to bolster their bullpen after a couple injuries. Um, I think they've done that. You know, Trevino, I read uh, a little bit about him. You know, his his ERA and the kind of the standard numbers, not so good, but he's just been absolutely crushed by uh, the batting average of balls in play. I think it's like at 450 or something like that, Chris. So there are some – there's some positive regression coming. At least the Yankees are hoping so. And then Efres is kind of like that. You love that. The Yankees are kind of hoping for some of that nasty sidearm stuff. Let me tell you, don't be – putting him in against lefties because those side armors do not like lefties. I don't know what his splits are. I didn't look it up. I'm sorry. I'm, I should have done that before I made that comment, but typically you don't want to put those guys up against lefties. Uh, but I like the way this team is constructed. I mean, they got 70 wins already. They got Aaron judge playing like a fucking, I mean, there needs to be another level for Aaron judge. He's too good for baseball right now. He's moved like, on in the video game past this level. He's moved on dude. So like they are in a very, very good shot or, or a good space. They yep. have an absolute great shot at winning a world series. And to be honest with you and Dan super fan, Dan is right here. If they don't win a world series this year, everybody's gonna be disappointed. I know they say that every year, but it's true this year. It's really true this year. It is World Series title or bust. Not even getting to the World Series. They need to win the World Series or it's a complete failure in New York, according to the fans. Believe that. I think they're in, they're in a really good spot. I agree with you. I don't feel like the Montas move is as sexy as Luis Castillo could have been. I just, I don't find him, I don't think he's as good as Luis Castillo. I just don't. And that, that's no shot yeah, at Frankie I mean, Monta. Yeah. I, I think Luis Castillo was the second best starting pitcher available on the market behind Carlos Rodon. Um, and who knows? Maybe it would have cost him Peraza. I don't know. Man, those, those kids in the Yankees minor league system that I keep hearing about better turn into stars. I've never seen a large market team we're like, and we held on to this guy, and we held on to that guy. Well, you know what? If if it costs you a shot at Juan Soto and you don't win it this year, keep enjoying your prospects. I think Brian Cashman's done a, a fine job. A fine job. I if think I so to too. I mean, yeah, he's 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 got them in a position to compete for many years to come, which is what you want. Obviously, yeah. the Yankees need to be competitive every year, and they have been competitive every year. Yeah. I think that's one of his main jobs. You cannot be Excuse my language, a shitty team if you're the New York Yankees. You just can't. No, but they're never shitty. It's just. I know, I know, but that's, that is, if you're the GM and he's been the GM, how long has he been the GM for? Since 90s. We talked about it, since 98. 
98? Since, since 98. He's done yeah. a great job. I mean, this guy is a legend. Yeah, I think he's under but he got he's got he needs another title. He needs his Absolutely. own title. Well, he did. He got it in 09 and now I thought yeah, I guess you're right. One title, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he he was the GM when they won other titles, but they were teams that were not construct fully constructed by him. But th- that's neither here nor there right now. Um I do like all the moves they've made. I do. I, I think the Efros move is really interesting. Trevino, I've seen him when he's been at his best. He, can't, he would come out of that bullpen and just be a ground ball machine, and the Yankees think because their infield defense is so strong, which it has been all year, that that'll help him out. Who knows? Might be. It's worth the risk. Throw him in there. Why not? Um, Montas, he starts game two or three, depending on who you play in that opening round, and depending how Nestor's doing at this time of year. It's good. Um, but, man, if I'm a Yankees fan, your shopping list – over the last 10 days, was Luis Castillo and Juan Soto. You end up getting Benintendi, Montas, Efros, and Trevino. <laughs> You're mean, Chris. I'm not mean. Go back You're and look mean. at Yankees Twitter from 10 days ago. Go say, I guarantee you, people were like, give me Castillo, give me Soto. I don't care what it costs. And so today, they're trying to convince themselves that this is good enough. It might be. We don't know. Yankees Twitter is on the same page of keep. They love that they kept Volpe and Peraza. Great. They love it. Great. And I'm not really sure why they're so happy with that. I mean, I know these guys can turn into studs and you have visions of Derek Jeter type players, but you know who else was excited about prospects? The Padres, who just traded two of them to go get Juan Soto. Preller's a madman, though, man. I know, and they're and more Cashman desperate are because different they've never won it. GMs. Yeah. So I'm just saying, I'm not taking shots at the Yankees, but if you go back and look, if you were to ask Yankees fans, fill out who you would most like to get during the trade deadline, and who would you be willing to give up? Most Yankee fans would have said the guys I mentioned. Dan, jump on here real quick. I got to ask you a question, buddy. Unmute yourself. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you believe – in the Yankee starters after Garrett Cole in a playoff after Garrett series. Cole in a playoff series with Montas, I would say an eight, a good eight. Wow. Because wow, you have, high. yeah, no, hundred percent. I mean, assuming Severino is in the rotation and is healthy come October, Montas is the two, Sevy is the three, and Nestor has actually been Sevy, really we don't tall. know about, just got put on the 60 day injured list. No, that's, we that's don't all. know about him. No, we know about him because it's not like it was setback base. It wasn't setback base. It's so they don't go over his innings limit this year. They don't rush him back. He'll be back by mid-September, three weeks to ramp up for October. He'll be good to go. So you have Cole, Montas, Sebi, and Nestor Cortez. Pitching-wise, bro, that, that's pretty solid to me. And okay. Castillo, I understand we that's who we wanted the most. But, like, if you look at the package that the Mariners gave up for Castillo and then the package the Yankees gave up for Montas, it's like pretty insane. Cashman did very well this deadline, I'd right. say. And he didn't and give for, up in my opinion, Frankie forward. Matas is not nearly as good as Luis Castillo. No, most certainly not. That's not what I'm saying. I mean, but when 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 Frankie Matas makes his first Yankee start, it'll be the second time in his career he's made 20 starts in a season. That's fine. But also on the topic of Soto, the Yankees wouldn't have been able to get Soto. So I feel like they don't have the controllable major league talent like with the uh, with Mackenzie Gore and what's and CJ Abrams. Is. Yeah. You're, you're right. Be able to pull off a Soto trade, so it's not like I'm mad at something they couldn't really. do. That's not true. You can always pull off trades, always. But it would have taken the Yankees' top prospects and then major league so ready what? talent. They don't have no, but the so the, the Nationals would have what? asked no, and that's fine. I would have given up all four of the Yankees' top top four prospects. It took major league talent on top of that, which the Yankees don't really have. They have a Glaber, and then they would need somebody else. They don't have that somebody else to give to the Nationals. I don't think it would have been possible. It's possible that 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 that's true. I would like to have seen the Yankees go after it. That would have been a Yankees move. Last statement. But we got to go. Brian Cashman, had a, he had a very good deadline. And if it ended and they don't do anything else, I mean, they'll trade Joe Gallo, but if they don't get anybody else, I'm very pleased as a Yankee fan. And I feel like this right. is their best Until they don't win it all this year, and then you're all motherfucking him for what, not getting but, one set up. Before we move on from the Yankees, I asked our, uh, our Yankee leaders at the company, Jimmy and Jake, I said, two-word answer only. Are you guys content with the Yankees roster now? Jake said, close, no. Jimmy said, content, yes. 
Okay. So we're split at this company. Good. I'd like to hear that. All right. Uh, we we got to run through these last two here. Um, I want to talk about the Braves. They added Jake Odorizzi, Robbie Grossman. Uh, they also gave Austin Riley a 10-year, $212 million extension. Yes. All smart moves by the champs. I believe so. Odorizzi is going to give you some back of the rotation depth, which you need. Uh, I love Robbie Grossman, kind of like what he brings to the team, just a hell of an at-bat. You know, you can plug him into the outfield if you need to. He can come give you um, some pinch hitting if you need to. Eric Hosmer has not approved the trade per Bob Nightingale. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and then the other one was – God, I'm just – I'm blanking right now. What did you just say? About the extension for Austin Riley? Austin Riley. This is the open-air concept, the windowless concept that we're talking about. I love the Braves. I love them for the next fucking six years, dude. This is what happens when you hit on a few guys and you give them, like, team-friendly contracts. Like, you have Ronald Acuna Jr. on a $100 million contract. He's looking at Austin Riley being like, what? Well, to me, I think that's a huge story coming up over the next couple of years. Mark this down. We said it, that Ronald Acuna at some point once there's a guy on his team that he knows that he's better than, and Austin Riley has been an MVP, he's in the MVP discussion this year, but you don't think Ronald Acuna is looking at him like, he ain't twice the ball player I am. I just said at he's some point He's not twice that's- the ball player he is, but he's, shoot, he's turned into on par of Ronald Acuna Jr. right now, That's which is kind of crazy to say. Listen, dude, I know, and nobody ever made Ronald Acuna sign the $100 million deal. And when he did, we all went, one day... He's going to be pissed about it, and I'm just going to reiterate that. But you're right. Alex Anthopoulos, he made some cute moves in Toronto, did a nice job getting him back to the playoffs, traded for an eventual MVP in Josh Donaldson. What he has done the last couple of years in Atlanta has been a master class. He has gotten Matt Olson to replace Freddie Freeman for eight years in 168. He's, you know, they've got Ronald Acuna there for 100 mil. They've got out. The Albies for seven years and 35 mil. And now they've got Austin Riley for a decade in 212 million. This is how you do it. You get out ahead of it. Don't ever tell me about, oh, we don't have enough money to do this. Just be smart. Be smarter, GMs out there. I keep hearing about how smart all these guys are. Be as smart as Alex Anthopoulos. But like you can give these deals out, like because they have not only like Acuna with the team friendly contract, but you have a guy like Michael Harris coming up who's an absolute stud and you're paying him the league minimum, dude. Like this is, this is what you dream of as a franchise. Like I know, but they home growing players. And then you're able to like kind of lock them up at different stages for different monetary value. I mean, this core is now in place. dude. I I love, I love what the Braves have done. I do too. That's what I'm saying. A plus plus. Listen, there's a lot of young players out there that are like in the neighborhood, not exactly like, Austin Riley. But how many franchises are willing to give a 10-year deal for more than $200 million? You have to have the foresight. You have to have the backing of ownership. And you have to have the balls to say that for the next decade, we're willing to, to bet on this guy. You think he's got a weight clause in there? Young, thick? You can't be, you can't be getting old. You can't be old, thick. No one wants old, thick. <laughs> like young, thick is okay. Hey, John Boy hired thin, me. Austin I'm, Riley. I'm old, thick. Uh, All right, we got one minute left on Jacob DeGrom making his Mets season debut tonight. Any concern that he will not be the DeGrom of old? Absolutely not. The velo's there. He's a generational pitcher, and like I said, I cannot wait for him to go do his thing his last couple months and then hold Steve Cohen hostage for $50 a year. It's going to happen, people, and I just can't wait for it. It's awesome. I can't wait. He's going to be unbelievable. Those single-A hitters in his rehab assignment are like, thank you. Get his ass back to the big leagues where he belongs. He's going to be sensational. The Mets have won seven straight. It's going to be a really fun last two months there in the NL East. Uh, And it's going to be a real fun last few hours in the trade deadline. Yes, sir. I got one last thing I want to say. Yeah. For a guy like Jake Odorizzi, for Will Smith, for Josh Hader, now you have a very good chance at getting a ring. Not because you're on the team you're on now, but because of the team you left. Odorizzi, if the Astros win it, gets a ring. If the Braves win it, he gets a ring. Same with Will Smith. And then Hayter has the Brewers and the Padres. I I just kind of like love that aspect of it. Like everyone wants a World Series ring. Now these guys have two teams that can do it. 
Yeah. Yes. I would agree. Yep. It's not All the right. same as being there, but you still get the ring, bro. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And it, I remember in 2010 when the Giants played the Rangers, I interviewed Benji Molina, who started the year yep. as the Giants catcher and then played against them in the World Series. He was like, yeah, I'm getting a ring either way, but I really, really want to win. <laughs> yeah, because so, you want to spray the champagne. Of course you do. All right, listen, this was a lot of fun. We're going to have much more to touch on on Wednesday's edition of Baseball Today. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Great job by our producer, Dan Rourke, and our intern, Sam Singer, for keeping us up to date on all the latest trade information. Most of all, thank you very much for listening. For Trevor Plouffe, I'm Chris Rose. We will see you Wednesday on Baseball Today.